All righty, ladies and gents, welcome to the Krasimir Kostadinov uh, live stream seminar. Um, I'm going to let you guys um, join this live before we uh, bring Krasi in. Uh, he is waiting in the waiting room of the Zoom right now as we speak. So uh, I'm going to give you guys a chance to, to get in here before um, we start this formally. <clears throat> All right, let me just uh, bring this up so I can see what your comments are and all that sort of stuff. And we will go from there. F please forgive me if we are, if I am struggling a little with, um, with getting this underway properly. Once we're underway smoothly and I've got your questions coming in, uh, then it will be no dramas. But we've got five minutes before um, we actually uh, start with Cressy. And uh, we'll go from there. So I'm just going to see if I can get the live stream up on my phone as well so I can see your comments. Mm -mm -mm. All righty. Hope everyone is well. Um, let me just close these down. Waiting for some people to come in. Concurrent viewers, it looks like we got one person in there at the moment. Fantastic. Good morning to you. Good evening to you, wherever it is. If you're in the USA, it's probably lunchtime. If you are in Australia, it's early morning. People like Tim Graham, I know you're going to be here. Tom Demkowski, there's a few few of you guys. Anyway, um, and if you're in Europe over there with Crassy, then it's late at night. So all three corners of the globe we've got going on at the moment. All right. All right. Once you once you arrive in here, jump on and send me a um, send me a comment. Chuck a comment in for me, and then I'll know you guys are here. All right, it looks like we've got a couple of a couple of viewers coming in. That's what I like to see. Guys, can you chuck a comment in? Let me know you're here and we will get underway. We've got Crassy in the waiting room. Uh, he's not too far away. So I'll just wait for everyone to uh, arrive before we get the actual seminar underway properly. But throw a comment in, let me know you're here. And um, yeah. Can't wait to get started. We got, a, we got. I think we got about twenty odd people that we've uh, got in here today, so it should be awesome. Make sure you get your questions ready for Crassy. Uh, it's going to be good. So just waiting on the time to get to that twelve pm, and then we will kick it off. We got Crassy in the waiting room, and uh, <laughs> we'll bring him out of the lockdown in a moment. Alrighty. <laughs> Hope you guys are well. Um, we got one minute to go before we're going to kick this off. Hopefully we get a few of you waking up. If you're in Australia, it's bright and early. I do appreciate it. Pr probably people like Tim Graham uh, from South Australia, Tom Demkowski. Hopefully you guys are not up too early for this, but um, it's going to be it's going to be a good seminar. Got a lot of questions for Crassy. So today, what, what's most important today, guys, is 
um, you get the opportunity to ask your questions to Crassie as well. So um, he's taken the time to get down to his gym. He's in his gym with his Crassie Costadinov apparatus. So we'll be able to see a lot of the way that he trains specifically and um, get the chance to ask, most importantly, get the chance to ask him questions directly as well. Mm, all right. So we've got a bunch of people in here. Chuck, guys, if you are in here and you're seeing the live stream successfully, just throw a comment up for me so that I know that we are good to go. And then um, as soon as I see someone comment, I'll bring Crassie in and we'll get underway. Mm -mm -mm. All right, guys. Just want, again, want to make sure that you guys are seeing this before I do start with Crassy. So um, just waiting on confirmation from one of you that it's all working smoothly. I believe it is, but I just don't want to start unless it is for sure. Hey, Sebastian Burke, thank you so much for the comment. It looks like we are up and running. All right, guys, I'm gonna bring Crassy in and we will get underway. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as you can see, we are joined by the legend, the Bulgarian legend himself, Krasimir Kostadinov. Uh, Krasi, it's good evening for you, isn't it? Yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much, Krasi, for, for, for being here. Um, this being the first time I've ever tried to do a seminar through uh, through YouTube like this, given that COVID, given that we can't fly you down to Brisbane, this is the next best thing. So uh, have you <laughs> have you done a seminar like this before? Like this, no. Yeah, there you go. And let me just, um, oh, I'm just getting a few people messaging me. It, it's oh, just double checking we've got everyone in here, but then we'll get right underway. Uh, it's on. I hope I will be useful for many people. Oh, I have no, I have no, <laughs> I have no doubt. I, I know me personally, um, I've been wanting to ask you a lot of questions for a long, long time. Uh, I've, I've had a, a great opportunity to, 
to, to learn from a lot of the North American legends. Uh, and so for me to get that well-rounded approach, I think you're going to be very good for me today. So I, I can't wait. Um, all right, Cressy, give me two seconds. I'm just a couple of people struggling to get in. I just, I just want to give them a couple of moments to, to get in before we get underway and then we'll, we'll kick it off properly. All right. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Um, so let's get it underway. All right. All right, ladies and gents. So Krasimir Kostadinov, as you as you would be well aware, uh, one of the absolute legends of the sport. Um, Krasimir, I would love to, to start this by hearing a little bit about your story, the origins of yourself as an arm wrestler. Uh, how did you find the sport? How did you get into it? And, and um, tell us about that early days journey. Uh, I was the strongest in my class in school. And uh, I was beating even the boys from the higher classes. And when I was 17, <clears throat> I found out that uh, there will be national championship in Sofia. Mm -hmm. I decided to go there uh, and I got fourth with left and third with right without uh, any knowledge about arm wrestling. And I just fell in love with the sport and said to myself that one day I will be the best on earth. And I am still chasing my dream, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're very, you're very close. You, you've been. Um, what, 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 Krassi, What year was that that you you went to that tournament? Two thousand five. Two thousand five. So okay. So, so fifteen near, years in the sport. Uh, so wait, that that very first tournament. What was the level of the tournament that you were that you're pulling in? Like what? How, uh, it was pretty good level actually um, back then in Bulgaria there were more competitors than now <clears throat> we didn't have so many world champions as now mm -hmm. but uh, the popularity of the sport was higher back then here okay there you uh, go and especially the junior class that I pulled there were two really good guys there. One of them uh, became second at the Europeans three weeks after that. Mm. So mm. with that third place, uh, I was uh, showing to everybody that I have potential to reach mm. something. Yeah, well, that, that's it. I know, I know for, for, for a lot of people that I see coming to the sport, there, there is already a... An, a love of the sport before they even ever discovered there is a professional side. I know that was me yes. too. I, I loved, I, I would beat everyone in my school and my friends. It was no worries at all, but, um, but I never faced a pro. I didn't know it was a pro sport. So, but your first go, you were against other already pros. And, and you uh, I, I can say something about that competition with left arm. I grabbed with the guy who became first and we were like this, Nobody moved. <laughs> we just caught each other's hand and nobody moved anymore. And the referee said, wow, what a grip, like a champions. <laughs> and, after, and after that, he just, bam, he flashed me. I, I was, what the fuck? <laughs> what, what, what just happened? I couldn't realize how strong he was. I was yeah. like, never, never, ever beat me like that before. <laughs> Yeah, I bet. I remember. Yeah, the first time I met someone who was a, a genuine professional, it, it, it they they to me felt like um like a steel bar. It didn't feel normal. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, thought I was strong and there. Like whoa, okay. So, Cressy, did you have any early influences in your in your the way you sh uh, became an arm wrestler? You mean from somebody else? Hmm. Yeah. Was there an arm wrestler out there that inspired you that uh, you tried to emulate or? No, actually, no, not a single person. I just uh, what I was watching arm wrestling every day, every day for many hours. I watched almost all the videos that I found in YouTube and one Bulgarian site, VBox, back then, and that was it. I want to say one more thing. Uh, when I got in, uh, when I be became arm wrestler. Uh, I was training fitness before that. Mm. I started with the fitness when I was 14. 
So until 17, I was lifting weights for three years and a half, maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was very good at bench press. I was 17 years old and benching about 160 okay. at uh, body weight one, uh, 82 kilos. And in my mind, I was like this to choose bench pressing or arm wrestling. <laughs> I was a little bit confused. Yeah, well, I'm, I, glad you, I'm glad you chose I arm wrestling. I chose arm wrestling. There you go. All right. So did you have, was there a particular moment in your career where you thought you had kind of a breakout performance where you went from being a new guy to all of a sudden people recognizing you? Mm, I don't know. Actually, in Bulgaria, everything happened very fast because one year after that, uh, I beat uh, all the junior class uh, here in Bulgaria and most of the men here also. So very fast, mm. I beat almost everybody with right arm in Bulgaria. Just uh, three, four people were above me with right arm. Mm. And after another year, I was already national absolute champion. There you go. <laughs> So what, what year did you become national absolute champion? Two years and a half. Oh, very good. That's impressive. That, that, that is a very steep rise straight to, to the top. So when, it, how, I mean, how did you pretty much instantly go from novice to pro level? Was it, was it within months or? A year, a year. A year, a year to get to pro level. I know, I remember, um, John Brzezink once said to me that uh, uh, it, it, if, you, if you're not pro level within three years, you probably won't be pro level. And I remember thinking, gee whiz, I don't know. It took me, I feel like it took me, um, took me four or five years to get to proper pro level from where I started. Um, so uh, I was a bit slow, but you were fast. You're like John. <laughs> fast uh, but uh, the main key here is uh, when you start the age is very important factor what and what age did you start at 17 but uh, but when i was 17 i was very strong already mm, so okay. let's say let's say i started 14 years old with intense training yeah okay gotcha okay so you you were strong you you had a massive bench press as a, as a child um and then you came into arm wrestling and you, and you were right there. So we, was it, would you say it was your hand that was the, the natural strength or were you, was it your arm? Side your... pressure. Side, Side pressure and triceps. Mm -hmm. I had huge uh, shoulders back then. Right now, my shoulders don't look so good, but back then they were like balls here. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay. Well, your, what, what, what do your arms measure? Um, your biceps very famously look enormous in a lot of photos. Right now? Right now it's a 47 centimeters cold, my right. Okay. okay. What's that in inches? 40, 40, 45 is left. Oof, I don't know in, <laughs> in inches. Oh my goodness. Anyway, so the, the, it's pretty clear that the background of yourself, you, you, were, you, were, you were strong as a child. Uh, you came to the sport and you naturally did well. Um, but you've gone on since then in 2005 to, to become, as you said, you're, you're pursuing to try to become the best in the world. Um, I know people like Engen Terzi will say that you are one of the most technically aware arm wrestlers on the planet. Um, who, who Did anyone teach you or did you teach yourself? Like where, where, was your, where did your journey begin on, on the technical side of things? Uh, the first year... I was traveling to Sofia almost every month and people from there, Nikolai Ivanov, Stefan Stefanov, Netko Petkov and one other guy from Razgrad, Valeri. These are the four people that teach me most of the things how to train. Okay. And where, where you sit now, uh, I think you, you're, you're famous for your, for your hook, but uh, were, you, were, you, were you always a hook puller predominantly or were you, did you start out as a top roller or where, where did it begin? Hook from the beginning. Okay. <laughs> from the yeah. beginning till, yeah. till the end. 
<laughs> That's very good. And, and I, I don't know, um, is is Bulgaria, uh, would you say Bulgaria is prom- predominantly a hook-pulling nation or uh, is, is it balanced? Or? It's, it's balanced. Hmm. Okay. Uh, about 15 years ago, Bulgaria was top rolling nation because the best pullers from Bulgaria were from Gorno Rakovica. Mm-hmm. There were three world champions back then Svetan Gashevsky, Stoyan Gulemanov, and Miroslav Ivanov. They're all from there. Yeah. But right now, uh, from Tutrakan, my town, where me, Sasha Andreev, Bujidar Simeonov, Dimitrina Petrova, all who pullers world champions. Mm. And <laughs> one and one top rower, Elbin Ferrat, he was junior world champion. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So Krasi, moving on, diving deep into the, the actual technical side of arm wrestling, uh, what do you consider the most critical strength in arm wrestling? Side pressure, I would say. That's wrist bad. flexion, wrist flexion, and side pressure. Lovely, lovely. All right, can you ex- expand on that? What, why side pressure? Uh, as uh, my friend Georgi Gurgiev say, for arm wrestling, you need to have a strong elbow. Hmm. There are many people who who pull without wrist, but when they have strong elbow they still can win the match. But if you don't have strong elbow, doesn't matter what else is strong, you will lose anyway. <laughs> so that's why you need to have strong elbow to be able to go to the side. There you go. That, that's that's a genuinely fascinating, Krasi. I, I honestly didn't expect you to say that. I thought you were going to say wrist flexion, given what I... When I when I visualize you arm wrestling, I feel like you're such a, a dominant wrist flexion based puller. But yes, actually, well. these are the two most uh, hmm. uh, important things. But even if you lose your hand, you still can win the match. But if your hmm. elbow is not strong enough, there's no way to to win the match. Hmm. Now we, we we will get later on in the seminar, guys. If you're watching, we're going to get to how. Crassy tra- trains in the gym and how he goes about conditioning his elbow. Um, but for the moment, we're going to keep in this in the te- technical side of things. Um, some o- some other questions about side pressure uh, in terms of uh, execution um, off the go. Are you are you someone who um, because I, I, again, if I remember back to 2019 uh, Zlotita, um, watching you pull, you went. You went through the early rounds very, very comfortably and very, very fast. Um, is your your initiation from the beginning? Is it is it is it predominantly side pressure off the go? Yes, but uh, most yes, side pressure produced from the chest. This mm. side pressure. Okay. And this is the thing that most of the people don't understand when they train. For example, they put. Uh, they put um, the table next to the pulley system and they start to train like this side pressure. Mm-hmm. But w- when you train like this, your chest is not, uh, you don't use your chest. You are only depending on your shoulder. I can show, show you on the pulley. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I, I, I'll admit that I'm, I, the way you described it that first time is how I often do side pressure. So, so if your shoulder is behind your hand, this is your chest. When you start to do this, you're using just the the shoulder, not the chest. Mm, okay. So when it, so I see you, I see you most of the times you just pull with your shoulder. You don't use your chest. And that's true. And that's why, and that's why it's always um, hard for you to take the center from the beginning after the goal. Mm. Mm. So yeah, very much so. And, and winning the, winning that first, 
moment in, in any match really is the critical determining factor, isn't it? I mean, you win the first inch, you've, you've got control. So, so you, so you would consider. Oh, we lost you again. Well, you would consider my battery is going down. I will turn it, turn the charger soon. Okay, so um, you would consider winning center uh, pro the most vital thing in terms of the the on table combat. Mm. No, it's not the most important thing because sometimes, for example, when I put Levan 2016, when I beat him, his uh, uh, chest was stronger than mine, but still I had the power of my elbow to, to stop the match. Mm. So it's very, very good to use your chest for, the, for this, the beginning 10 centimeters of the match. But even if you lose that 10 centimeters, you are still able to, to win the match. Yeah, that's not it. But uh, if, you, if, if you have that, that strength here, you are able to win most of the matches fast. If mm. you don't have that, most of the matches become very slow and long and you are not able to win the tournament this way. Mm. Mm, yeah, no, I, I, I can understand that completely. Like I, I've, I've been someone who's been, I found myself defensively arm wrestling a lot of matches, and as you, as you, are, <clears throat> as you noticed correctly, I don't often use my chest at center, and um, that makes sense as to why I've struggled to to win matches quickly, particularly in Poland. Uh, I was on the back foot right from the beginning, so. Um, Crazy. Tell me. Most, most of the people, when they train side pressure, mm -hmm. they, they start from correct position, but it gets heavy, and after that, they continue mm. push like this. Mm. And that's a mistake. The, the thing is that you should just go with lower numbers and do it here. Mm. There you go. There you go. Training the most critical areas and sticking with them um yes i feel like like travis bajan actually has a very similar philosophy with back pressure um he doesn't allow his arm to open up too much he'll he'll only keep it in the close zone um tell me about back pressure training for you is is, is that a similar philosophy do you try to keep it uh close and tight as tight as possible mm, uh, yes but um depends if your opponent is going to go inside or to try or is trying to top of you because mm. if he's going inside you can drop your wrist and concentrate here but if your opponent is going high you can pull a little bit more open to because when you're a little bit more open the back pressure is uh, stronger. Mm. Yep. And uh, when you're going top against top, then you don't need to be so close. You, you need to go to get to the high, as high as possible. Mm. I but, if you're, but if your opponent is going inside, then you need to be really close here and to hold this because when you're like this, you don't have so much side pressure. But when you're like this, the side pressure is stronger. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Krasi, I, 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 I want to dive much deeper into this specific cable training. Um, and some people are asking questions about the, the, the PEC and that as well. Um, but before we do, I want to just take a step backwards a little bit more and talk about the technique on the table um for a little bit longer before we get into specifically on the gym but so you mentioned before that side pressure or your elbow conditioning and wrist flexion are your most critical um where does where does a fundamental like pronation sit in in in, in the level in the hierarchy of importance for yourself it's the third after the elbow and the wrist flexion the next important thing is the pronation. And is pronation mostly for you an offensive or defensive style of uh, strength? 
I will just turn my phone to recharge. Yeah, no worries, all good. Just some housekeeping uh, for everyone here in the YouTube audience that's watching. Uh, make sure you uh, send us through your questions. Um, if I don't get to them straight away, I will read every single one of them and we will absolutely address each of your questions today. So guys, do feel free to type your questions in the comments section and um, we'll get to that. But yeah, so Crassy, pronation, is it for you, is it um, a defensive strength, an offensive strength? Um, where do you find yourself using it most? Uh, you can use your pronation in every angle. Even if you're losing the match, you can still take some someone's hand with your pronation. When you're winning the match, sometimes the thing that is missing is exactly a little bit more pronation to finish the match. So pronation is super mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the fourth of the fundamentals back pressure is your least important of the fundamentals? <laughs> mm -hmm. If you are top rower, back pressure is uh, second after elbow, I think. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if you are top rower, even if you lose your wrist, if your back pressure is strong enough, you can win the match. Mm. So it depends if you're a hook puller or top rower. Okay, and that, that, that um, leads me to the next question being that, how does what how does how does an arm wrestler determine what style of arm wrestler they should be? Uh, my way of thinking is that you should like what you are doing. Doesn't matter if you are strong or not. You should like the way you are pulling. If you like how the hook pullers do it, you should go for a hook. If you like what the top rowers are, are doing, go for top row. Yeah. Yeah, do you, do you feel like it is uh, a lot of the time based on um, the shape of your body, the, the, the size of your hand, the length of your arm, that sort of thing? Yes, because most of the tall guys are not so strong here. They're stronger in pulling mm -hmm. exercises, but uh, there are some exceptions. So the most important thing is that you need to like what you're doing. If, yeah. if you like what you're doing, you give more from yourself, from your soul, and you develop better. I love it. I love it. Um, and you've been a hook puller from the beginning, yeah? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> do, do, you, do you use your top roll to keep your hook fresh for the final? Well, the Lachlan Adair actually asked me asked this question to you. Um, he... With my left, with my left, the, the last two, three years, I'm using my top row, but we tried not so much. Actually, 2013, I started to train my right for top row. Mm. And I was training it two, three times a day, top rolling exercises. And uh, after so much training, my something happened in my arm. And I'm not able to stay close with my right anymore. I mean, something happened there and too much calcium and I don't know, but I'm not able to, to go closer with my right. With my left, I can stay closer, but with my right, mm. not anymore. Mm. And it's now when I train too much back pressure and pronation, I feel that uh, the pressure here is going mm, too much. And I'm not able to flex it good. Okay. And that's why I don't train back pressure with right that much as before. I understand. And are you able to to straighten your arm, or is is there the the, the joint stiffening as well? I cannot straighten it. Yep, that's it. Yeah. Okay. And has your your left arm? Yeah, bigger range, much bigger range. Yes. Yes. That's that's okay. always. A, they asked me at one interview, "Why you stay so you stay in, during the match so open?" And I say, "This is the maximum that I can go forward with my shoulder." So mm. there you go. <laughs> Would, I have to I have to ask the question when whilst we're talking about arms not opening. What what is your opinion of the the king's move? And uh, is it something that you you despise or are you okay with it? 
No, I'm not okay with this. Uh, I think that that thing should be stopped. <laughs> Because, uh, no, most of, most of the people who doesn't understand arm wrestling think that this is just the, the other, an, another technique. But I don't uh, see it this way. Because when, for example, Michael Todd pulled against Andrei Pushkar, Rest in peace. Uh, Andrei Pushkar was going with all his power to finish the match. And Michael was staying like this and talking to the referee. Mm. I, I don't see it fair. He's just um, sitting there and waiting for the opponent to, to get tired and after that to finish the match. Mm. Nothing, nothing against Michael, but uh, I don't see it good for arm wrestling. Just uh, for me, that, that is unfair move because when you're relying on that bone lock, you don't pull all the time. You just need to, to squeeze here. You don't need to use any power from your arm. Mm. And it's just not fair in my eyes. Mm. Mm. I, I wrote a comment maybe a week ago that for me, every time uh, if you open your opponent's arm till the bone limit, you should be the winner of the match. Stop the match and win. Difficult, difficult. To, I guess it gets difficult for us to, the referees to... to no, it's not difficult. No, it's not difficult. If you, if you know arm wrestling, it's very easy to see when somebody yeah. is going and they're fully down. Yeah, okay, yeah. The, the, the idea of arm wrestling is to stay close mm. If they open your arm, you should be the loser of the match, not to to go there from the beginning. Yeah. M M Mindauga said said this two or three days ago. This is the idea of arm wrestling, to stay close and to open the other's arms. Yeah. Yeah. But what happens if what happens if they start to open their arms from the beginning? Yeah. The I... idea of, of arm wrestling is already gone. Yeah. Yeah, fascinating stuff. All right, so move, moving past the King's move, um, back into uh, the technical side of things. Um, talk about talk about American arm wrestling versus European arm wrestling, uh, and also loading in the setup versus um, no loading in the setup. Um, there seems to be a big difference between the two regions of the world. Um, How do you, what's, you, you, you're someone who's pulled in both arenas quite high. Uh, how do you see it? I can say that uh, in America, there are many good pullers. And um, almost everybody in America are very technical and well-rounded pullers. In, and they're able to go hook, top row everywhere. Most of the Europeans go just for one movement during arm wrestling. Mm -hmm. uh, but I like uh, both sides actually. You choose if to, go to train top row and hook or just one movement. It's your decision. And I can understand both sides. And about the loading or not, Here in Bulgaria and in Europe, we are used to pull uh, relaxed with no loading before the start. Mm. Actually, when you are loading, you are not able to be fast on the go. Everything is happening slower after the go. Mm. So we, we are used to stay calm with relaxed arms and just mm -hmm. <laughs> explosion that, that was... on the start. That was 100% for me the most difficult thing with my experience at Zloty last year um, was I, coming from an Australian background and, and an, an experience with the USA pullers. Uh, I'm so very used to a lot of load in the beginning. And uh, as soon as the, the ref script happened in, in Europe and there was no movement, I felt like I didn't even know in myself which direction I was going to go off, off the beginning. So... Um, How does But that that's that's because you don't have chest. If you have a stronger chest, you will know where to go. <laughs> because that. the the way it's now, 
you don't know where you will go because you know that the the match will start from here and yeah. it will not go where you want it will go where your opponent put you mm, i love it there we go well i've, I've already I, if, i've already received more value from this seminar than uh, that i could have asked for just to, to identify that um fantastic so uh, it's, there's been some very interesting matches, uh, notable European pullers going to WAL and struggling, notable WAL pullers going to Europe and struggling. Um, but let, let's, what about the, the, the Hermes Gasparini match with Matt Mask? Um, how did you see I that? Know, I don't know why the people are talking so much about that match. It was unfair, blah, 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 blah. If you know Armour's think you see very clearly that it was pretty fair match. Mm. I, I don't see any confusion about that match. Just mm. Matt won that match. That's it. Yeah. The third round, uh, the people say uh, Hermes didn't go. No, it's not like this. Hermes st started to load, but his hand uh, dropped. Mm. Just his high hand was not strong enough. And Matt take his wrist. It's not so difficult mm. to see that. For me, that was clear win for Matt Musk. Mm. What happened after that, after pool? I don't care about after pool. And it's after pool. <laughs> Everybody saw what happened on the match. That's it. Yeah, yeah, Cressy. Um, when 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 we when we talk about execution on the table. Um, are you someone who looks to try to get where you are strong or try to take your opponent away from where they are strong? Most of the times I just try to, to go where I am strong. Mm. I, I don't care so much for, your, for my opponent. Actually, this was um, my, uh, my mistake for two matches, I think, that I lost. My match with uh, Tim Bresnan, for example, I was training and preparing very wrong for that match. Uh, I was thinking that the best way to stop Tim is to try to stop him in the middle with holding my pronation. But after three or four lost rounds, I tried to do what I was doing before and just go with the triceps forward and I managed to stop him and realize that my my whole pre preparation about that match was wrong mm. and trying to, to beat his weak uh, area, not to go for my strong. Also against Dave Chaffee, I knew that he's uh, not so fast on the go. And during the preparation, I was just going with start explosive hits, just was training this mm -hmm. and was thinking that I will be able to hold my good position after the goal. But uh, after the first round, I realized that the best thing that I could do against him is just to try to stop him and to tire him. Mm. So that's why you should not focus on your opponents uh, weak points, but on your uh, strong points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, I've always, uh, it's always an interesting decision to deciding to go for the win early or to try to establish a strong defensive position. I, I, I know for me, if I'm up against someone who I consider to be a stronger athlete than, than myself, like for instance, you against Levan, you said he won, he had center on you, but you were still able to. Um, in, in, in that circumstance, I feel like like the defensive... Let me explain you something about this. If you know for sure that your opponent is good as you or almost as you, and there's possibility the match to stop, it's not good to go for the win from the beginning. Mm. Because if you go for the win from the beginning, you lose a little bit from the grip. Every time you attack, your grip is, is going mm. a little bit down, down. And that's why when you know that you're almost equal with your opponent, it's better to go for a better position, not for a win. 
Very good. I like it. I like it. So, so Cressy, let's um, let's talk. I know a lot of people are, are looking forward to hearing about the specific training. Um, so, in terms of the the, the technique, guys, uh, if talking to the guys on YouTube, if you do have any questions regarding on table technique, uh, let me know. We can come back and visit it. But we're going to move into um, how Crassy actually goes about getting strong in the, ma- the, the, the in the manners that will make him who he is. So, um, let's go back to. Uh, can we start with that side pressure talking about the pec? Um, can, we, can we see that on the table, Crassie, a bit more? And um, can you expand on how you would actually structure a, a program uh, specific to that side pressure? The first years of my arm wrestling career, I was training mostly with weights. I didn't have uh, uh, so many training partners and I was training with weights. Uh, the most uh, important thing for every uh, hook puller, according to me, is just to, to go with cable from up and to go down, to push it uh, with thick handle or wrist uh, wrench. Mm. Against, all the top, against all the top rollers, this is something that helps for the hook pullers. And uh, if your opponent is hook puller also, then you need also strong, strong biceps and pronation. So I don't think that uh, most, uh, you need a lot of exercises. I, I believe that you need just three, four exercises and that's it. Mm. This what, is what, how what, I see the things. What, 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 is your, what is your general overview? So what is your mixture of table time um, to gym time? During the years, it's constantly changing. <laughs> um, the first years, o- almost everything was gym training. After that, I met the Bulgarian legend Ivana Bajiev. He was the trainer of the weightlifting. I don't know if you know, but about 20 years ago, Bulgaria was the best um, country uh, uh, in the powerlifting, in the weightlifting, weightlifting. Mm, mm. From seven categories, we were taking about five golds very often. Mm. Uh, and after I met with Ivana Bajiev, he explained me many things about about the sports, how the human body reacts to different things. And it's pretty simple actually that if you want to get stronger in arm wrestling, just pull on the table. Don't try to make similar things. The best thing you can do is just to pull with stronger opponent. And after I met with him, I started to just train arm wrestling. Mm. four or five hours a day arm wrestling uh, divided on two or three trainings hour, hour and a half and just pulling my opponents were using two hands or or a belt mm. and, to, and we were beating each other but um, the most important th- thing about this way of, th- of training is that people should know that they should not try to win them every single match. They just need to train every position. Mm. And it's not so simple to be explained like this. I need to show on the table how you should do every movement. But the, the guys who are interested may see the seminar which I held in uh, Amsterdam, in Holland. Mm-hmm. There you can see I show I'm uh, how I'm doing the things on the table with partner. Mm. Yeah, well, yeah, it, it is a challenge. And, for- and after after and after that, <clears throat> I was training like this, just arm wrestling for a long time. Uh, how many years? I don't know. 2012, maybe about six, seven years. I was just training arm wrestling, almost mm-hmm. no weights. Mm-hmm. And uh, 2019, 
when I pulled Barbosa. Uh, for about half year, I decided to make a, an experiment to go again just for, with weights. Mm. And actually, I was pretty strong that day. From my side, I think that I could win that match if I did what I did the first round. But I was training again in my mind something that didn't work mm. back then. And I realized that you can be strong with weights, you can be strong with partners on the table also. So there is not just one way to reach the top. And right now I'm training again mostly on the table. I'm doing a pronation from the ground, uh, some pull-ups like this, and bends in the morning after I wake up. There you go. So, so, so currently, so you go through seasons where it's gym or table or a mixture, um, and you yes, but the, the, most of the people should know that I like mostly to pull on the table every day, two, three times, four times a day, just to pull on the table. There you go. And, and, and you, are you finding different opponents for that, or are you? How, how do you how do you get that many opponents and that many um, people to group up with? I'm just training with two, three guys here. Yeah. They're juniors, and they hold me with two hands or with belt, or with <laughs> Dimitrina Petrova, my girl. She she, yes. she can hold me with the belt also. Lovely, lovely. Um, Tim Tim Graham wants to to know. Um, he would like to hear what specific four exercises you made mention of. You referred to uh, that you, you're, when you are on the gym, uh, on, on the table, you mentioned the high okay. poly. Yeah. I, can, I can tell you for, for a hook puller, for example. From a pulley, from up, going down. I will show with my left because I can stay closer <laughs> to push down. Uh, so one another thing is that you can do it with uh, a belt over your thumb from the ground pronation or on the pulley also you can do it from down position to pronate uh, that's two uh, from the at the pulley again, let me show you. This movement, hmm. that's three. And uh, what else? Grazi, you're, you're, I've seen you. Okay. Grazi, you've mentioned uh, about strict starts in your training, um, that you don't train with your wrist already bent, uh, regardless of handles. You, you try to start in the most difficult position possible. Is, yes. Can you expand on that for me? Uh, the match starts from here. If you start from here, that means that from here to here, you don't train this and you will not be strong in, in that point. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be able to take the center after the goal, you should train that. You, you cannot think that you will miss that part, but when you go on the competition, I will be able to do it. No, you will not be able. <laughs> Crazy. Do you, do you train that as well? Because and, uh, and the reason I ask that is, if if your center strength is let's say on par or it's the same as your opponent, and you both end up wrist on wrist, um, then it, could it be said to be beneficial that you to train that that strength as well? Or do you just do you always just want to start the the center strength training? I just start from the beginning. And after that, I do the whole movement. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
and 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 be happy to stay with lighter numbers to be able to do that don't don't fall for the temptation of of going no i no no i'm not happy with the low numbers but just <laughs> start from the beginning <laughs> Uh, Chris, we, we, when you when you get stronger you will go to the high numbers anyway so yeah very good <laughs> Chris, i, I want to uh, there's a couple of questions in the comments um that i want to um uh go back to uh i know we've, we've touched on it a few times there but levi usley he is asking when you're training um with the chest like we've kind of touched on it there in re relation to the hand and wrist but when you're training on the chest and the weight is heavy enough that it takes you out to the shoulder. Um, do, do you can continue with the movement or are you literally considering it a failure and you're stopping as soon as you get pulled out of your chest? Depends if you want to train your shoulder or your chest. If you want to train your chest, just go for lower numbers. If you want to train your shoulders, just continue to do it that way. Mm. So do you do you train your shoulder that way or, or are you like how much of it are you... no mostly my chest I train mm, okay. because because when you train your shoulder that way the risk of injury is high higher mm. and uh, yeah I can I can relate to that I, I I damaged my shoulder quite considerably this year with with training exactly like that. I was I was actually deliberately exposing my shoulder and working on side pressure here. I, uh, I have seen your videos, yes. <laughs> a lot of, and, lot of and, and when I was watching when I was watching that videos, I was like <laughs> when, when will he get smarter? You should you should have you should have jumped on the phone and, and rescued me, Cassie. <laughs> oh anyway. Uh, the gift of injury, as uh, Devin Larratt uh, mentioned to me, that uh, when you get it take often it takes an injury for you to start to realize where uh, invest time needs to be invested. But um, yeah, uh, on the on the on the the injury topic, um, how have you managed to have such a long career without significant injury? What have you done? I don't know really. Most of the years, my right have been just great. Uh, I had injury 2017 at the Nationals with Sasha. Mm -hmm. And after that, that year was not so good for me. Uh, but uh, all the time, my right was good, except five, six months, 2017. With my left, I had a lot of pain during the first years and I did not know what to do. I was hurt and I was continuing to train and to push and to push and to push. After that, I realized that this is not the way you should go. Mm -hmm. When you have pain somewhere, just leave that area to rest. Just train the other areas mm -hmm. without where you have no pain. If you have pain anywhere, and day by day, it's not going away. You should just give rest to that place. Hmm. It's, it's interesting. You, you, right back at the beginning of the seminar, you talked about your elbow being the most critical of your, your strengths in arm wrestling um, and your ability to, to use your elbow for side pressure. Um, how is the health of your, that, that flexor tendon in there? Do, is, is it ever painful for you? No, uh, about that joint that you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, if your fingers and wrists are strong enough, you will not get hurt there. Mm. When you are strong here, the pressure goes in the muscles. Mm. When you are weak here, you just go side pressure and all the pressure goes down. Mm. Yep. So just okay. get, get stronger here and you get rid of that pain. I 100% agree with that. Um, often, for for me, for me, there's always it's always been a some degree the of best. The best way to get uh, stronger here is the wrist wrench, because mm. it makes you squeeze and curl. Mm. The, the, with the, the wrist... with the other handle, with the thick handles, other handles, yeah. you still be 
uh, going with that pain. But yep. with the wrist range, you need to squeeze and the pressure goes in the muscles, not in the joints. Mm. Krasi, uh, a question from Cam K. Uh, do you use high rep or blood flow training uh, for recovery um, at any point? No, no. Nice. For example, today I'm resting. I, I will not uh, go for hard training today. And uh, I, I train, for example, two times today for about 20 minutes with uh, 70% of my maximum. Mm -hmm. Just uh, th three, four reps with 70%. This is light training for me. There you go. So um, the Bulgarian method, uh, you mentioned that the Bulgarian nation as, a, as world number one for weightlifting some time ago. Yes. And they developed a, a, a system of training uh, commonly known as just the Bulgarian method that really focused on yes. one, one rep maxes and a lot yes. of them. Um, have you, have you applied, what do you, how do you see one rep max training in arm wrestling? Uh, your opponent is stronger than you or with belt or with two hands. Mm -hmm. Starting position, you go with all your power and slowly he beats you. Mm. That's it. Okay, so one, so so you should do your one RMs as part of table training. I do it almost every day. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And this is this is what I believe is the most uh, is the best way to gain strength. Yeah. You go a hundred percent, and your opponent slowly beat you. Ah, there you go. If your opponent is not strong enough to beat you with control, mm -hmm. you may get hurt because you then you need, you, then you start to pull real, for real. Mm -hmm. And then if you do it very often, probably you will get hurt. Mm -hmm. That's why your opponent needs to be a lot stronger than you to be able to beat you very gentle and slow. Mm -hmm. There you go. Well, I, I'm I'm blessed that I have someone like Lachlan Adair for for that exactly. Uh, he's tremendously strong, and 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 over the last seven weeks, we have introduced um, uh, maximum efforts. Kind of ready go. It hasn't been with a referee, but it's just been to a timer where we've genuinely put in the biggest effort we can um, to pin. Do you do you do anything similar where? You're actually training reactions and training to, to be explosive off the go? If your opponent is holding like this and he, say, he says to you, ready, go, and you go. Mm. But um, I, I do it sometimes, but uh, your arms need to be fresh to do this because if you are sore, Mm. It's not so good to do this. Yeah. And, and so, soreness, soreness really does affect um, coming into a, 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 um, to an, to a super match or a tournament. Um, how, how, do you, how do you personally taper and in relation to soreness? Do you want all soreness gone by the time you're at comp or how do you prepare? Uh, you mean how do I rest before competition? Yeah. Or? How, do you, how do you rest and taper for a competition? Uh, the, before a very important competition, I rest about 10 days, which means 10 days with no maximum effort. Uh, and for example, if I train right now four hours a day, the last 10 days I will train um, one hour a day, 70% of my maximum. And I may skip a day, for example. Mm. depends uh, how I feel my arms if they are very sore on the 8th day before the competition I may skip that day to do nothing the next day again I will train 1 hour 70% of my maximum depends how I feel may I, I may skip one more day and again 70% of my maximum Mm -hmm. And usually after four or five days, 
I am already feeling comfortable and I can go even 80% of my maximum five days before the competitions. Mm -hmm. And the last four or five days, again, every day, 30, 40, 50 minutes, 70, 80% of my maximum. Mm. There you go. So you don't, you, uh, it, I've, I've heard so many different um, contrasting opinions on that. I, I, I remember I've heard up one end of the spectrum, John Brzenk, I remember he said to me, if there was a million dollar match for him and it was a year from today, he'd train hard for 10 months and then have two months where he was very, very, very light. Where Todd Hutchins will say he won't stop training at all. He will just make his one at max day. He'll reschedule his program so that one at max day is competition day and he'll just do the exact same as he always does so you're sort of halfway in between john and todd <laughs> yes uh, i know for sure that if you don't train your maximum more than one week mm -hmm. it goes down i mm. can bet money on that Every strength sports uh, have proven that. Mm. But the thing is that in arm wrestling, sometimes it's better to be a little bit weaker, but with healthier joints. <laughs> so it's, it's very complicated about this. Mm. Yeah. No, the, the, I, I, again, 100% agree with it. If I have niggling pain, the, the confidence to to accelerate off the go is, is, isn't the same. And you find yes. yourself catching and responding. Very interesting stuff. Um, what else we got? Having a look at some of the questions we've got in here. Um, sorry, one second. When you, when you're training from Cam K, when you're training at that 70%, um, how, how many, how many reps and uh, sets are we talking or are we talking 70% of your table energy? I have partner on the table. I go there. He's junior and he's holding me again with two hands. Mm -hmm. And I go about 70% for three, four seconds. And that's it. Mm. Okay. Um, Krusty, let's, let's, a question from me. Um, and if, if I'm not training with my partner, I just go with, um, for example, for pronation from the ground, for, for let's say this exercise, 70% mm -hmm. of that weight, two, three reps. Two, three reps. Krusty, can you, um, can you talk about, uh, static holds, uh, versus dynamic lifts, um, do you, do you train specifically static holds at any point? I have never trained static consistently. Uh, actually, for the last 15 years, I have maybe, I don't know, three, four ex uh, training statics. I don't train statics. I just train maximum efforts and negatives on the table. I go mm -hmm. for 100% and they beat me. There you go. That's fascinating. I mean, arm wrestling. Obviously, statics statics are a popular exercise among a lot of a lot of arm wrestlers. Um, I have never trained statics. Never. There you go. There you go. Well, you're, you're proof that you don't need them then. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Let me just have a look through my list of questions again, guys. If you have any specific questions for Cressy. Um, uh, anything, anything at all. Uh, now is your chance as I'm just going to go through uh, everything I've written down as well. But let's have a look. Mm -hmm. About warming up for competition, Crassy. Are you, are you someone that, that has a warm up routine or are you someone that uh, likes to go in cold? Like some people. Uh, this is a little bit problem for me when the competition is too long because I'm used to warm up a lot and I need somebody to warm up with. Mm. I, I'm not, um, I don't feel good if I warm up with weights or with bands. I prefer somebody to catch me with two hands and me to go almost 100% before, before I go on the stage. 
Mm. Okay. And for for example, I warm up about 15, 20 minutes before the first round. I go on the stage, I win. And uh, after that, I sit on my chair and I'm waiting to see my name again there. Mm. And for example, most of the competitions, they show three, three matches, the next three matches. And when there are two matches before my match, I go and I do one more um, warming up set. Mm. Two matches, that means about five minutes before my match. I do another warming up and that's it during the whole competition. Mm. Okay, there you go. A question from Cam K. Uh, as a hook puller, um, do you train specifically supination? Uh, no, the people who are training supination like this, according to me, they don't understand arm wrestling. Mm. I don't see how this thing can be useful. Even if you're a hook puller, it's not good for you to go like this. It's always good to hold your pronation. Doesn't matter if you go against top rower or against hook puller, it's always good to hold that pronation. It's never good to hold like this. It's never good to be in this position. Mm. That's why I don't like this training. Every time I train, I, I go with this way. Mm. Mm. Never mm. this way. Even if I try to hook some top rowers, I never go this way. I always try to go here. Yeah. Um, question from Levi Usley. Uh, how it, how do you specifically recommend to train your biceps um, as part of arm wrestling? Uh, if you have a pulley that that is on the table, this is the best way, according to me, because when it's on the table, you can train it. Uh, let me show you what I think is the best for biceps. Something from down and from here, you do this. Because this way, you're not training just your biceps, but your side pressure also. Or this way. Because in arm wrestling, in arm wrestling, you never let me put it here. here. In arm wrestling, you never do this movement. Mm -hmm. you, you're not able to lift your opponent's elbow. That's why the movement is always mixed biceps and side pressure. Mm. That's a good point. That's a good point. I like that. Especially if, you, especially if you're in the straps as well. There's no rising and climbing or anything like that. So that, that makes a lot of sense. It's, 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 it's always good to hold your biceps and your chest in the same time. And so that, that reiterates the, the point I, I, you mentioned earlier about maintaining good form. If, you, if you're not on the table with an opponent and you're, you're training with the pulley to, to maintain true form that, that, that is what will happen on the table. Um, a lot of people you'll see on Facebook, myself, I'm, I'm guilty of it, um, going to positions that I never go to in a match on the pulley just because I'm stronger there. Uh, but you should know that I speak from uh, hook puller side. Mm -hmm. So just now I, I, I started to think that if I'm top rower, I just may go here. And mm -hmm. when you're going 
uh, around your opponent trying yeah. to take his hand. <laughs> um, you can train that back pressure from the ground also, or uh, from the pulley from the from the center. This way, there are many ways to to go for back pressure. Mm. Krusty, a uh, question from um, Tim Graham. Um, he writes, uh, if Krusty recommends four exercises in the gym, uh, what is your sets and reps? Uh, and do you just lead up to the one RM or do you have a particular sets and reps that you would work when you're in the gym? Uh, I warm up. So let's say I have three sets of warm up and uh, I reach my one rep max and I perform at least five sets with one uh, with maximum weight mm. just for one rep. Or if it's difficult to determine one rep, two reps, two or three, yep. but not more than three, not more than three. Mm. If I, if I train with weights, I go from one to three, no more than three. There you go. And, and, and the, the progression of leading up to that um, is just really essentially a, a gradual warm up, or so you, there's not a lot of reps before you get into those heavy sets? I put something light. I do seven, eight. I, do, I put something heavier, four, five, heavier. Three, four, and maximum. Mm, there you go. And there you go. So the, the, the season that you're in at the moment, Krasi, you said to me at the beginning of the seminar that you're still trying to become the number one in the world. Uh, how, yes. how, how far away right are you? Handed. Right handed. That's very important because my dream for many years was to win Zloty with my right. And mm. last year I won it with my left and I was happy, but... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, i mean it was a good performance your, your left looked absolutely killer last year you put everyone to the sword very very quickly and the thing is that i was training my right maybe 30 40 percent more than my left and i was 20 30 percent stronger with my right mm. but with right got second <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, and so, um, Krasi, in, in, you're going to be pulling the top eight um, uh, it, it, should COVID allow it to, to happen. Uh, how, how do you, how, who do you see as the biggest threats? Who are you most confident against? And um, how, how do you plan on attacking the top eight? Uh, of course, in my eyes, Levan is the favorite one because um, he's strong everywhere. His wrist is strong, his hook is strong, his pronation is good. He just uh, have no weak points. So that's why he's the favorite one. Uh, Dave Chaffee is also an opponent who would be difficult for me. These two are the guys that would be favorites if I pull with them mm. in my eyes. In my eyes, hmm. against what, what, what all the you... other guys, in my eyes, I'm the favorite. Very good, very good. What weight would you be coming in at for the top eight? Mm. Uh, right now, I am 102, 103. Uh, during the spring, I reached 106. I was eating a lot and taking a lot of. <laughs> supplements but I got very fat for with these four extra kilos <laughs> and I didn't like myself yeah and I'm I'm not sure if four kilos of fat would help me <laughs> yeah <laughs> so is- I, I don't know many years ago maybe five six years ago I said to myself if I reach 105 kilos lean kilos I would be able to beat anyone so mm. this is what I am what is still my goal to gain another 
two, three kilos, but to get to to be lean, not not fat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What when when you you began way back in uh, two thousand and five? What was your weight back then? Eighty two kilos. Eighty two kilos. The the next the next year, two thousand six, was my last year like a junior. I was eighty eight kilos. And my arm was 48 centimeters cold. Mm. <laughs> Natural hook. A, right <laughs> a, a, a little bit uh, pumped, it was 20 inches. Mm. At, at, 80, at 88 kilos, you had 20 inches. Pumped, yes, my yeah. right. I'm, I'm, I'm 17. That's as good as I can get. 17. <laughs> <laughs> actually sick. this is this is not the most important because right now my arms are uh, we, uh, smaller mm -hmm. but on the table I'm stronger so mm. and what, why, is, why is that crazy? why do you think that you're str stronger is it, is it a bit more elbow conditioning over the years is that what the, the critical difference is back then my arms were bigger because I was lifting more weights Mm. 2000, uh, 2011, my arm was 51 centimeters cold. That means about um, four, four centimeters more than now, almost two inches more than now. Mm. Yeah. And that was because uh, I was lifting a lot of weights then. But uh, if you want to be strong in arm wrestling, you don't need that size. You need just to be strong. Mm. So it's not about the size. Yeah. It's about the, the mind and the heart. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, that, that's an interesting thing. You, you, you talked on the mind and the heart there. Um, how much of arm wrestling do you consider a combat sport compared to a strength sport? And, and do you see it one way or the other? Or is it a very much a mixture of both? mostly strength sport I would say 10% it's a combat sport because sometimes uh, sometimes that, that's why I say about 10% of the cases you may your opponent may, may be scared of you and <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. that's very rare mm. Mm, yeah, that's true. Um, Krasi, uh, just on some, some, some general questions, have, have you had a favorite moment in the sport um, in your career so far? Of, of course. What was it? When I beat, when I beat Arsene Liliev in Brazil. What year was that? Uh, two, uh, 2012 in Brazil. At the world. I was waiting for that moment uh, four years. Four years of constant training and thinking about Arsene. That I will beat him. I will beat him. Yep. Yep. And, and the, uh, the, interesting, the interesting thing about that year is that I believe I was able to beat him in Bulgaria, in Stara Zagora. But the draw was different and I pulled against Todd Hutchins. Mm. And all my preparation was specific for Arsene. And I was not uh, preparing for somebody with so strong hook. hook. Mm. And uh, because after the match, the next day, we went to the gym and I pulled with Arsene. And I was able to stop him and to have a match with him. And, uh, but the draw was different. and. Mm. this was it was what it was yeah 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 Todd uh you, you yourself and Todd Hutchins have, um two very different styles but both strong hook pullers um what what do you, what do you think of Todd's side pressure style in relation to uh not so much caring about the hand compared to a, a hand-based hooker like yourself Todd has extremely strong elbow and shoulder. Extremely strong elbow and shoulder. Mm. 
maybe uh, not maybe the, the strongest side pressure that I have ever felt is from Todd. And I can say to him that I want to pull him. I also think that I beat him last time in Moldova. I think that was win, but the referee didn't, didn't give it, it to there. me. I was filming it. I was filming it. it was uh, yeah, I could it could have been called for sure that first. I, I'm 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 sure it was win, but anyway, uh, I'm still hoping for a rematch. I want to, <laughs> to pull with him because he beat me in Stara Zagora. After that at A1, I was already tired, but anyway, he beat me, and mm -hmm. now at Moldova. Mm. So three three competitions he beats me and I really he's the guy that I want to pull most. There you go, Todd Hutchins. Right, right, right now, <laughs> if I had opportunity to pull someone, I would pull him. So maybe um, I, I, are you still able to pull in the WAL or are you committed solely to the top eight? Mm, I I don't know I don't know because last year I I said to w, WAL organizer that uh, I would like to pull top eight and I will not go in there. Yeah. So don't know right now what will happen. But yeah. It will my, dream is, my dream is to be number one in the world with right arm. So if I want to reach that thing, I you need to, to pull top eight. Yeah, for sure. Um, Cressy, we have a question from Cam K. Um, it's a good question. Something that I, I relate to to as well he's asked do you ever have nerve issues in your arm or hand uh, and he makes the comment that um, as he's getting stronger and, and bigger in the sport uh, he gets numb hands when he sleeps do you ever have any dramas with it when I stay at home and uh, for example when I'm reading a book uh, my fingers start to be <laughs> <laughs> like this, but usually when I'm pulling on the table, I don't feel it. Mm, yeah, yeah, I, I, I can relate to that too. For me, same. I'm I'm now almost uh, almost eight years in the sport, and yeah, I have numb numb hands and wrists. If I if I if I when I sleep, if I leave my arms in the wrong position, they're buzzing. If my if my arm is too closed or if it's too open, mm -hmm. this yeah. happens. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, for a long time, I'm sleeping on pillows. I, I put my arms on a pillow to not be straight. Mm. Yeah, there we go. I, there need to be something to, to put my, arm, my hand on. The, the life of an arm wrestler. We, we, we've all got the same. Uh, do, this is interesting because when I started arm wrestling, 2005, and that strong guy that beat me with left, he was something like this, to, said to me, oh, don't start with arm wrestling. Uh, I'm sleeping on pillows. <laughs> and I said, well, what do you mean? He said, I need to put my arms on something. But I was like, okay, I will be like this, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> yes. not, not, not the worst thing in the world, but um, <laughs> it, have you ever have you ever lost feeling like uh, in a permanent sense? I know that when I uh, the very first national tournament I ever pulled, um, what, there was one particular slip that we went to straps where uh, in like a triangle from my pinky down my elbow. Uh, I, I could scratch here. And I lost it, you know? No, no, it's not. Okay. But it came back. It took about five months for it to come back before it was good. So. Thanks, good, no. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, wonderful. All right. Well, I'm going to just put one last call to the YouTube audience there. We've um, we've gone through, we've answered each of your questions so far. So we do have Crassy still here. Um, I see a couple of people have just arrived late to the seminar. But guys, Last last call for questions for Crassy. Uh, this this video will of course stay here in the members area. So if you have missed it, rest assured that you can go back through and watch it. Crassy's gone through. We've gone through a lot today in terms of technical pulling, how Crassy approaches the sport uh, and approaches the table. Um, we've talked about the use of all the fundamentals, uh, how he prioritizes the fundamentals of arm wrestling. And then we've gone and looked at the gym and, and how he programs his gym time as well. 
Um, so there's, there's plenty in here for you to go back and have a look at. But um, if you do have any questions uh, specifically that you've been hanging to have answered by one of the legends of the sport now is the time to do it. Um, and whilst, whilst those questions are coming, Crassie, um, uh, top eight next year, have you got anything other than that or are you just laser focused purely on that? Nothing else on my mind so far. And, and you as a coach, you've got a number of students um, that you're... Not you're many, not many right now. Uh, right now I have just uh, three people that I train with. Mm. But I hope uh, one is one of them is Dimitrina and two boys also. Ah, this is something interesting that I want to say. Most of the people who never achieved anything big in the sports or anything else think that um, the talent is the most important for the sports or for the art or for anything else. I can say that for the sports, the talent has nothing with the results. Uh, the most important thing is to have strong mind and to wish it very strong with your heart. If you have a big wish, from your heart and strong mind to follow that wish, mm. you reach your goals. Mm. Uh, about uh, seven years ago, Bojodar Simeonov came to the trainings and he was very weak. Uh, some of the girls were beating him in his class, at school, I mean. Mm. And uh, I said to the people who were on that training, with him, I will show that the talent has nothing with the results after several years. Mm. And right now, he is world champion, 80 kilos. Actually, he beat me two months ago at the Bulgarian championship with left. Yeah, well, <laughs> there you go. Yes, yes. Right now, he is in very, very good shape. That's that crazy. Um, we've had a couple of people uh, throw in a few last minute questions. Um, uh, some of the some of these things we have kind of touched on, but we'll ask them. Tim Graham asks, um, do do you train extra volume at, at any point, or are you uh... never? When I started arm wrestling, all my focus was just strength, strength, and strength. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> Right. Um, uh, sometimes, sometimes I train volume for my chest because my chest is not so big and I like to have bigger chest. <laughs> just want to look. <laughs> yes, just just for the look. <laughs> Crazy. Also from Tim Graham, um, he asking specifically about one of your training methods on the table, one of the vectors that you that you're pulling. Um, when you, uh, I think it was. The, the high pulley uh, side pressure. Okay. Do you do you train that as a tricep movement or is it a bicep and drag? Both. I train triceps and sometimes I train more dragging. Mm. And, I train and do, both. Do you, do you use specifically a, a certain handle for that? Is it the wrist wrench? Wrist wrench, yes. And, and, and what's I'm the I'm a little bit disappointed because when when I uploaded that video with 57 kilos and I tagged many people and mm. I was expecting some of them to upload right. video also, but almost nobody, actually, I think nobody from that people uploaded video. I was just curious how strong Dave Chaffee, Levan are at mm. this exercise. Mm. Well, I, I, I know that when I saw that that exercise, I straight away, I didn't have a wrist wrench that was a similar size handle. I, I have a really, I have a three inch wrist wrench, but I, um, your, what, what's, what is yours? Maybe two and a half inch, two inch? It's 55 millimeters diameter. So that's, that's two and a bit, two and a bit inches. So, um, yes. okay. So you'd like, so I would describe that as a smaller, do you like the smaller wrist wrench because of the squeeze involved? 
I don't know. I have just one. <laughs> <laughs> I have never uh, trained with uh, some other. So <laughs> there you go. Is is it but, grippy or is it is it smooth or? Um, I have good grip on it. Okay. Okay. Good. Well, there we go. Because I, I remember when I saw that video, I did want to go and try it specifically to see what. And I I think with uh, the a, a, a two inch wrist wrench that I have, I was I I had a go and it was it was a it was smooth wooden, so it was a little bit slippery. But I was able to do like 40, 47 kilos with that with on a similar movement. And I thought. Mm, there you go and and adding just two kilos made it feel impossible so i was like all right i got a long way to go to chase crazy and uh, the starting position also is extremely important in that that exercise mm -hmm. because i have done 65 kilos from this position mm, yeah but 57 from this yeah i i noticed when i when i tried that that my starting strict i actually was stronger with my wrist my wrist back and <laughs> do, you, do you train wrist back with the wrist wrench no never never no wrist back with Cassie. okay no. <laughs> all right uh we're gonna ask another question we've got a from username wake up who is one of the the guys that just arrived late into the seminar he's asked um from all the fights over the years that you've had with Levan, how do how do how do you feel he stands up? Uh, sorry, how do you feel he stands this year if you were to face him? Can you can you beat Levan? I think so. I think so. He would be the favorite, but uh, I think that if I I am able to stop him, it will happen. What happened in two thousand sixteen? Mm. I cannot say for sure that I will beat him, but. I believe in myself. That's it. Mm, yeah, yeah. I, I see it as well. That I, I can imagine that if if you bend, if you get your wrist bent and get a and get him sort of palm up, I, I feel like I feel like yeah, you will win. Uh, yeah, you know. I, I don't know if you know this, but um, at Nimirov last year, um, Silaev beat me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he and Oletin were training together sometimes. And uh, they told me that, uh, Oletin told me that if he managed to take uh, Siwaev's wrist, he beats him. But sometimes Siwaev just flashes him. Mm. So, uh, and Levan and Oletin had a good fight in the first match. And that's why I believe that we all were with not so big differences. Mm. Mm. So we'll see if I will pull him again. <laughs> well, hopefully we do see it. Um, well, Cressy, I'd like to personally thank you um, for, for taking part in today's seminar. And uh, there is many people in the comments. It was a pleasure. Also expressing their thanks for you to being on here. So um, it, it's, like I said, for me personally, it's, um, it's I, I really enjoyed today. I got a lot of value out of hearing some of your philosophies. And also you even gave me some specific coaching on, on side pressure and, and engaging my pec, which was one of the big points that I remember. Um, so, but Cressy, thank you so much for, for this. Um, guys, as I was saying, the, the YouTube, this, this video will stay here in the members area. So if you did miss the early parts of the seminar, you can go back and watch it um, after we end the live stream here. But yeah, once again, Cressy, uh, thank you and best of luck for everything in 2021. Uh, we'll all be watching and um, yeah, can't wait. Hopefully we get to, I'd love to get over to Bulgaria personally and, uh, and to just get some training with you and, and Jordan and whoever else might be there. I, I, I may, I maybe will train with uh, Jordan tomorrow. <laughs> You'll be training what, sorry? Oh, with Jordan? I would, with, yes, no. his name is not, it's not Jordan, but Jordan in Bulgarian. Jordan, yes, and, and I, hopefully I didn't say crazy at any point today. I tried <laughs> yeah, to make I hope, I hope that after this video, uh, most of the guys will understand that it's not crazy, but it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> 
all, 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 all week I've been rehearsing crassy, crassy, crassy in my head, trying to make sure. I can say one interesting sentence. I don't know who said that, but uh, it's interesting. Doesn't matter who, uh, doesn't matter what they're talking about you, as long as they say your name correctly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, there, yeah, good stuff. Um, Crassy, thank you so much. Uh, we'll, we'll let you let you go there. Oh, oh hang on. I, I'm going to, sorry to keep you one more time, Crassy. A question that's a good question. I've just seen slip in. Um, it'll be the final question for the day. It was from Levi Ulsley once more time. He said, when you stop someone uh, in a match, are you primarily using your elbow or bicep uh, pressure to stop the match? Uh, mostly elbow and pronation yeah this is this is the key to win a long matches according to me good joints and elbow strength and pronation Love it. my my mistake was with Mar marcio when marcio beat me that uh, after the second round I was trying the final round when he beat me. I was trying to hold my biceps and pronation, and I got tired and he beat me. The first round when I beat him, I was using my elbow and pronation, and he got tired and I beat him. After that, I tried to hold my biceps and pronation, and I got tired and he beat me. Mm. So that's why, guys, for long match wins, you need your elbow and pronation. <laughs> Fascinating stuff. I, I, I really love that. I, I, I didn't, I genuinely didn't anticipate that you were going to talk about such value on the elbow um, today. So, but that, that's very, very, very fascinating to me. So once again, Cressy, thank you so much for today. Really, really do appreciate that you took the time uh, to do this. And um, for everyone here on YouTube, it really is uh, amazing to get someone of your caliber to be able to ask you questions directly. It's, um, it's a big honor for, for all of us here on YouTube. So thank you once again. It was a pleasure. All right, guys. We'll say we'll leave Crazy here, and uh, thank you all the YouTube followers uh, for being here as well. It's the support from you guys uh, paying to be in here makes makes uh, the sport grow. It helps helps myself, helps Crazy, helps the entire community. So. Thank